Welcome to the new playlist, Horror Classics. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the Shop 31. I am your host, Randall. As always, I hope you're having a good day today. Today, we're going to revisit, not revisit, we're going to visit a horror classic, one that I hadn't seen in probably 12 years or so, and I wanted to... Uh, it's been on my watch list for a while, but a, a subscriber mentioned it and requested it, therefore I did it, because that's how I roll. So today we're going to talk about Rosemary's Baby. If you are interested in watching this one after the review, you can check it out on Prime and on Hulu. It is included in both of those subscriptions. Uh, shout out to... Was it JR Jr. Moreno? That's the YouTube subscriber that requested this one. So thank you for the recommendation, my man. I appreciate it. Thank you for all your support. So, um, okay. So Rosemary's Baby. Let's see here. A young wife comes to believe that her offspring is not of this world. Rosemary Woodhouse and her struggling actor husband Guy move to a New York City apartment uh, with an ominous reputation and odd neighbors, uh, Roman and Minnie Castavet. When Rosemary becomes pregnant, she becomes increasingly isolated, and the diabolical truth is revealed only after Rosemary gives birth to the child. Um, the movie is directed by Roman Polanski. It stars Mira Farrow, John Cassavetes, and about six other people that I'm not going to try to pronounce their names because they're not names that I'm familiar with. Uh, music was done by Christoph Kamita. Cinematography is by William A. Frocker. Release date of June 12, 1968. Um... A runtime of 136 minutes. We will talk about that here in a little bit. Had a budget of only 2.3 million, and it brought in a box office mega haul of 33.4 million. So my goodness, that's a good return on your investment right there. So <clears throat> Rosemary's Baby. This is not going to be a long review. For 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 many reasons, I don't. So in my personal opinion, there's not a lot that goes on in this movie. So there's not a lot to talk about. The cinematography was beautiful in this movie. It absolutely was. The score was, I guess, good. I wouldn't call it super memorable, but it was all right. It wasn't bad. Uh, but this is a very, very slow burn. All right. So if you are the of the, you know, school of thought that maybe The Exorcist is a little bit slow, you might not want to check out Rosemary's Baby because it's it's in that same category to me. Uh, let's see here. There's a few things that reminded me of Midsommar in this movie, so I imagine that Ari Aster got a little bit uh, of his, you know, ideas. He probably paid homage to these guys. Is it homage or homage? I don't know. Homage. I feel like it's homage, right? I don't know. Somebody's going to correct me. I know they will. Uh, uh, you guys out there. I like the guys that think I'm dumb. Uh, <laughs> so I would imagine that Ari Aster paid uh, homage to this movie in Midsommar. I'm almost positive he did. I, I can think of an exact scene that he that I think he did. And it's got a lot in common, uh, like I said, with The Exorcist as far as its pacing. Uh, the best way to see this movie is to have as little idea as possible going in, in my personal opinion. Um, other, my, otherwise, it might be a little bit boring and slow because you kind of know what's happening. But if the, the less you know going into this movie, the better, I think. I think that it... it I don't know. This was a... I understand... That people like this movie, but there's there's different genres in horror. And as I was talking to Josh yesterday about this, and I was telling him how I thought this movie was kind of boring, and he he reiterated with that he thought some of the slashers that I like are boring. And while we both are respectful and understand that, we have our different uh, ideas of what's entertaining. And I think that a movie like this is going to tap into an audience that maybe I'm not necessarily going to have a lot in common with. Josh really likes this movie. I really didn't care for it too much. I don't think it's terrible. I just didn't think it was great. I don't understand all the hoopla about it. I, I understand in 1968 how this could have been scary. Absolutely. Um, but an example would be that I'm going to do another classic here later. It's like on the same, you'll see me wearing the same gear. I'm doing, I'm doing like a bunch of videos today. Um, I'm doing another classic that I'll rant and rave about. And as soon as you guys see the title, you'll go, okay, of course. But there's reasons, all right? This one isn't as well known as some others because of that. Now, the last 15 minutes of this movie are exceptional. I think that, in in, in, in my personal opinion, I think had they taken the run time from 136 closer to like 110, 115, um, take a 20, 25 minutes and edit it out of there, 
I think it would have gone a little faster and kept more people's attention. It would probably be a more popular movie. Now, that being said, it may not be the vision the director had. So I'm just giving my opinion on that. Um, I thought it was funny because in the movie, there was a couple of people that just immediately, immediately reminded me of other people. And I thought it was awesome because that's the kind of thing that I enjoy. And Mia Farrow reminded me of Clea Duvall. Do you know who that is? She was in, the thing that I remember her the most in is Identity. And I'll put pictures up of these folks. And then uh, John Cassavetes, he reminded me of like a darker haired army hammer. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. It's just, just what I saw. But yeah. So Rosemary's Baby, if I was to grade that one, I would give it. See, I paused because I, I didn't want to be mean. I'm not a mean person by nature. I Six out of ten, I guess. It's, it's above average as far as execution, but entertainment value it's it's far below in my opinion so i'll say six out of ten i imagine josh would probably lean somewhere in the eight i don't know i have no idea what chris thinks about this movie i'll have to ask him on shopcast but yeah so six out of ten i enjoyed it okay i, I would rewatch it again i own the movie it's not like i don't you know have respect for what was created I, I absolutely do the story is really good it was the execution that i had an issue with but like i said if they had shortened it it'd be more up my alley but then again most of the movies i watch are 88 to 95 minutes and you know that's what i dig so uh, but if you're into a slower paced slow burn uh movie about the occult and uh devil worshiping and things like that this movie might be right up your alley it's it's definitely a psychological thing i I'm talking myself into liking it more. I don't know. But I would like to know your opinion. Those of you that have seen it out there, specifically Mr. Moreno, I'd like to know, because you asked me to watch this, I assume you really enjoy this one. I'd like to know your opinion and why. So, But please, comment on the video. Like the video. If you want to check us out on social media or Patreon or make donations to the channel, anything like that, all that information is down in the description below. I appreciate it. We've gotten a lot of new subscribers lately, so welcome to the channel. Welcome to the fam. I appreciate all your time and your support. Thank you so very much, everybody. Have a great week. Have a good July 4th weekend. Be safe out there. I, I mean, I understand all the stuff that's going on in the world. Have a good weekend. Celebrate with your family. Enjoy some time. Uh, just be safe. Thank you so much, guys. This is Shop31. I'm Randall. Till next time, guys. We'll see you later. Peace.